All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Real McCoy Radio, um, episode 10 to be specific. Um, man, I'm excited about this one. Uh, we've been talking about this one for a while, and uh, now you're in the chair across from me. You guys help me welcome uh, Tony Mack. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. of course, man. Man, we, uh, nine months ago, were pretty much strangers, and yeah. I think I've seen you pretty much every day for the last exactly. nine months. <laughs> exactly. We got exactly. we got pretty close over these last yeah. uh, last year. I saw you uh, walking around the gym a few times before that, but I had no idea. <laughs> what I was, uh, that I was <laughs> shopping for yeah, it? <laughs> exactly. And then I saw yeah. you teaching a class one time. Yeah. Like in about um, six months before you came to the gym? So yeah. I, was just looking, I, was like, oh, I wasn't even in the market at that point. I mean, uh, you know, Bill owned the gym and yeah. I always just thought it was a cool place. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, you know, I didn't know that it was in my future. That's cool, man. Hey, man, but th everything happens for a reason, and it's been uh, absolutely awesome working with you. I appreciate it, man. It's yeah, it's you had here. you know you had a great reputation um, when we showed up, and then to see it firsthand and see you know the things that I you know kind of look at is you know how do the how do the members treat you, and how does your staff treat you, mm -hmm. and you know everybody just had nothing but absolutely great things to say about you, and I'm on that list now too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you, man. I really yeah. Do. Well, cool. You have, um, I'll kind of get to it because, you know, you've got an incredible story, yeah. um, that I think a lot of people would like to hear. Okay. Um, and, uh, and you're pretty fun to talk to. So <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine this will be a fun, a fun interview. I've been oh, looking forward yeah, to it for a while. So let me just start. We're going to kind of start where we are now. Um, which is, you know, your, your career right now revolves around coaching. Yeah. Um, but you didn't start as a coach. You know, you, you walked the walk as a pro boxer. Yes. Um, so I know a lot of your, you know, kind of friends and followers know that history of you. Mm -hmm. um, but for a lot of, you know, the people listening um, from my side of the table, um, tell us a little bit about your your career as a professional um, boxer. All right. So my career is not the uh, normal. You know, most people start boxing at a uh, very young age. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a uh, saying that you really can't be good at boxing unless you start at the age eight, ten, you know, around that age. But um, that's not true. I started boxing at the age of 20. Wow. Yeah, and, uh, never boxed a day in my life. I was uh, not an athlete growing up, and so um, I was terrible in football, <laughs> terrible in, in basketball. And um, and so, you know, I always, I always wanted to be an athlete, but I just didn't know how to be one because I, was, okay. I wasn't coordinated enough okay. at the time. I was a chubby little kid, um, happy-go-lucky kid. And, you know, nobody really took me serious, you know, sure. stuff like that. So I always had that little, you know, I always had like a chip on my shoulder growing up because, you know, I was I was an athlete and stuff, wasn't, wasn't coordinated or anything like that. But um, at the age of 20, you know, I uh, found boxing. I would say I didn't find boxing. I think boxing, boxing found me. Yeah. And so um, – yeah, I fell in love with it. And uh, just to make the story short, you know, I'll just give a little introduction about my career. I uh, started boxing at the age of 20. Um, a year later, won the Dallas Golden Gloves and as a novice fighter. And then, you know, I just fell in love. I'm like, oh, crap. I, my first fight I ever had, I got my, my butt whooped <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> you know, and uh, I think that was the first time I ever cursed in front of my father. Okay. Because after, uh, after I fought and I came out the ring, you know, I was like, Pops. Got my ass whooped in. <laughs> he was like, "Yes, yeah, son, you yeah. did." Yes, yeah, <laughs> <son>, did. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I just, uh, I just fell in love with it. With that, I was like, I just wanted more and more. Then I ended up fighting in the Dallas Golden Gloves, and then after that, I just started winning like crazy. And then uh, three years later, you know, um, I ended up making the USA national team and uh, fighting for um, fought against Great Britain, fought against Ukraine, fought against. Mexico City, and it was just uh, it was just surreal for me that you know I never in my life boxed, never was an athlete. Next, you know I'm representing my country. Wow, yeah, that's you know, crazy. And um, it was pretty cool. And I stayed amateur for seven years, and uh, ended up turning pro at the age 27. And you know uh, went 13 one and one as a professional. I say 14 one and one because I got to the fight, and a guy was supposed to fight, but he pulled out the fight at the weigh ins. And I was I was ready to go, so I. I took me 14 one, okay, one. That's yeah, one fight. I was like, him. you know what? <laughs> I'm so mad about things. I was so ready, man. Yeah. I was I was just hyped and and just uh it didn't happen. So I say 14 one and one. Okay, he okay. backed out right at the last minute. Yeah. But um yeah, I ended up being a um as a professional, ended up being a Texas super middleweight champion. And um, you know, and then retired at the age of 30 due to detached retina. Yeah. You know, so I spent 
10 years as professional, 20 to 30. And then, um, yeah, then after that, the rest is history. You know, everything yeah. else is start falling in line. And that's we're here now. Yeah. <laughs> so 14, 1 and 1, and then your retina detaches. Retina, yeah, retina detached. It sounds it, horrible. Is yeah. it as bad as it sounds? It was, it was pretty bad. Um, it didn't come from a single punch. Okay. The doctor said that it was genetics. Mm -hmm. He was like, my profession triggered it off. He was like, it would have happened when you got older. He's like, but, you know, you lived the, you lived, you, you had a dangerous professional. So, you sure. know, it just made it happen sooner than, than what it's supposed to do. So when they said, um, it all happened, like one day I just woke up with like a small little white curtain over my eye. And uh, I was like, man, what is that? So I never minded. And I just kept training and stuff like that. And then I went to spar. Like, like something you could see outside? Yeah, it was like, like a little bitty white curtain. It was like something you could see outside. Okay. And I was like, oh, that was weird. And then and then I went to spar. And then I was like, the curtain was getting bigger. I was like, you know, I stopped. Like, you know what? Let me go Let me go run to the doctor, see what happened. And, you know, and um, ended up going to the doctor. I went to the first doctor. Ended up going to Walmart. Um, <laughs> okay, like, uh, yeah. Eye doctor. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was like, yo, you have to. It was like, you have a. Your retina's detached. You got multiple breaks. So I gotta recommend you to a a, um, a retina specialist. And so um, end up doing that. And they was like, "Yeah, you gotta have surgery like right now, or you're you're gonna go blind." Yeah. And so I end up having a surgery, and uh, had one surgery, and then that worked for a little bit, and then I end up doing something like a, a couple of months later. I told you about the story with uh, one of our mutual friends. He asked me to uh, help him move some stuff, yeah, like some equipment from his uh, his garage. And so after I had my surgery, I, I thought I thought I was good, good and healthy. Yeah. But as soon as I lift up on the equipment to help move, my retina detached again. This oh. time, it completely came off. It was yeah. my white. My eye was all white. I saw it. I was like, "Yo, my my retina." I think I detached. He's like, "Ah, oh, you good?" I was like, "No, I I can't see. Like my eyes yeah. are nothing but white." And so as soon as I took, I was like, "Take me to the hospital." So take me to the hospital. And I was like, "You got to have surgery right now." I had another surgery. And then after that, after that surgery, a couple of months later, like your retina is not staying. Like they, they like we gotta have another surgery. So they tried different, three different, um, four different methods mm -hmm. to uh, keep my retina detached. I had to have a buckle around my eye, and I had to get a gas bubble, an oil bubble, and a gas bubble twice, and an oil bubble. The oil bubble was the one that actually kept my retina flat. And I don't know if you know the, the history behind. Uh, recovering from a retina surgery, you got to keep your face down for like two weeks straight. You can't look up. You got to. I had to eat with my like with my face down. I had to oh, watch like the, TV. The movement of looking. Yeah, so up. you have to. You have to like basically sleep wow. like in a massage chair for like two weeks, and like you have to and like you had to keep, do that. Have to do that times? five times, like oh. two weeks. Like I couldn't have to walk to the restroom. I had to go everywhere, with my head down for like two weeks, and it was like the worst. The worst recovery ever, oh. and so I was like, you know what? I get it. I can't. I, every time I thought about making a comeback, my yeah. retina would detach. And um, I, and I'm, you know, I'm a spiritual guy. I'm like, yeah. God, I get it. I was like, right, you don't want me to box. Let me figure out the, the next move. And so, um, yeah, that's yeah. like, and you know, and uh, I like the spiritual side of you, and that's something we have in common. And that's kind of, you know, people say God opens doors, but He also mm -hmm. closes them. And, exactly. And obviously, right. the you know, you got a door closed, mm -hmm. which I can imagine is the door you most wanted to go through. Yeah, you have fourteen, one and one. You're <laughs> exactly. on you're the on the rise, titles. man. Exactly. Fighting for your country. Yep. I mean, I can only imagine how yeah. hard that was. It was very hard. It was uh, it was painful. I felt like I lost my identity a little yeah. bit. I felt like I didn't know what to do next. Yeah. You know, and um, but while but the thing is, while I was training, um. Uh, my uh, business partner, one of my mentors, Nathan Pipitone, he always taught me a little business here and there. Yeah. Taught me business. We uh, we had a gym together while I was training. It wasn't really my gym. It was like a mutual friend gym who was like taking advantage of the clients stuff like that. So that's when I came in and helped Nate mm -hmm. run a business. So we was just running. We was teaching. I was basically personal training and teaching boxing while I was fighting. Yeah. We was like, hey, man, once we retire, we should open a gym, stuff like that. And just talking about it, thinking sure. it was going to be happening like at the age 39, 40 years old. Sure. And um, that's way down the line. It's way down the line. And so, next thing you know, um, it happened at yeah. 30. And uh, oh, and so, uh, and then I was working for another guy who owned a gym. And uh, I was looking at the way he was running his gym and stuff. I was like, yo, if he could do it, I could do it. Why? Why can't I have my own gym? I was scared as ever and stuff like that. And so, uh, and that's how it all happened with a uh, T Mac Elite yeah. training. And um, do you want to be elaborating into that? Continue. Yeah, I mean that's we're going straight into my next question, which yeah. was, and I think there's probably, if I had to guess, 
you know, trainers and athletes out there that will relate a lot to this story. And that's, you know, how do you make that transition from being, look, I'm the athlete to now, now I'm going into coaching mm -hmm. and, and being a business owner, which exactly. as you know, is, is way different than coaching. I mean, yeah, very, there's like very. coaching and business owning and it's like two different skill sets. Yeah. So how, you know, how was that transition for you? Well, the, the, the blessing is, is that I always been a people's person. I always, um, had a connection with people. Yeah. Um, so I think it was kind of easier for me, but my, I had thoughts and fear that I wasn't going to get respected as a coach for my peers. Yeah. And I wasn't going to, and I wasn't, you know, through my school background, I wasn't smart enough to own a business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, so I was just so scared, but I always had something about me where I just jumped into something. It's just, sure. you know, whatever happened, happened. If I fail, I fail. If I succeed, I succeed. Mm -hmm. Let's go find out. And so that's the mentality I had going into each stage yeah. into coaching, into, into, um, business owning. So I figured as a fighter, I learned, I did all this hard work in 10 years and I made it to that level in 10 years. I was like, look, I got to have a respect for my peers. You know, I spar these guys, I hang out with these guys and they see how serious I am. So I'm like, you know what, let's see what happened. Let's see if they, sure. you know, if I get the respect as a coach and, and it happened. You know? But that's a, you know, kind of a blessing right there. Mm -hmm. I would uh, imagine is that a lot of guys wait until they're retired and older and on in a different kind of stage of life to become a coach. Yeah. You kind of were a coach while you were still hot. Exactly. So I'm yeah. sure that had its advantages too. Because exactly. you were like, right. you, you were legitimate as like, well, I mean, he was just winning fights exactly. and now he's coaching. I want to go work with him because exactly. he's a winner. Yeah. So and that's versus that like he's over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And so it, it just kept me in the game, you know, so yeah. uh, so went from fighting to coaching. I realized that is that is a very hard, hard job because you're inside the ring listening to your coaches yelling at you and stuff like that. And it's very hard to understand it. And now you're outside the ring yelling at the fighters. And it's just I call and apologize to my coach and business owner, I mean, my uh, business partner. I'm like yo, I I apologize because <laughs> these fighters ain't listening to nothing. Yep, I see yep. what y'all <laughs> I see what y'all saying. I was like, man, I just want to smack him. Like, yo, get it together. Listen, dude. You know, what I'm yeah. I just and I call like, look, I, I see why y'all was mad at me all the time yeah. for not listening to you. You saw it from their their I, angle. I saw it. Time. I saw it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. So um, you have a wide range of clients now. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably the bulk of the clients at our gym are. You know, they use boxing for fitness. Mm -hmm. It's fun. We got a great set of coaches. You're going to get a great workout, burn a ton of calories. Yeah. But they're not looking to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe exactly. <laughs> or get in the ring or fight a tournament. Exactly. But um, you also work with top fighters. I mean, you have professional boxers. Um, your clients are – you're traveling to UFC fights in mm -hmm. different countries. Yeah. Um, you know, you work with top-tier fighters. How do you, as a coach, you know, take care of that variety of clientele? Um, it's, it's tough, but I've learned dealing with people, you have to work with the person as an individual. Mm -hmm. You have to be empathetic with certain fighters. You have to be empathetic with certain members. You got to understand them as an, as an individual and, um, and, and just, and just dissect, just don't be hard on everybody. You just gotta, it's, that's a, let me, I'm trying to figure out how can I, um, uh, how can I word it, but you just gotta. Just, just love on people and yeah. just, and just show that you care. And, um, yeah, I mean, from the outside looking in, that's like, I think probably one of your strong suits, right? Is that yeah. you really care for the person's exactly. success. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, you can take your highly skilled boxing training uh -huh. to the masses, or you can take it to somebody that's, you know, much like you was a professional. Exactly. Athlete. Yeah. So, uh, you just gotta. Just, just focus on like say Vincent fighters. You can't say me coming up. You can't be too hard on a fighter because every fighter is an individual. Mm -hmm. So you got some fighters who you could be hard on you, and some fighters you got to be a little bit more patient with, yeah. gentle with. So you got to learn how to how to treat each fighter as an individual. Now, Same thing. Okay, with, this is I got to interrupt you because <laughs> this is a funny story. So tell us the story. I've heard it. Um, you know, we got a guy at the gym, uh, Blake that oh. you told us you kind of learned lesson as a coach because yeah, I think he was fighting, you know, kind of as a hobby. Yeah. And you were like, you put him in a tough fight or something. So tell tell said, that story. Oh, you talking about Blake. You talking about uh, <laughs> yeah. King. Yeah. Cause King. you're, you're learning. You're learning. <laughs> so yeah. So I, <laughs> all right. So this is hilarious. So I, uh, 
So I, as my when I first started coaching, you know, my mentality was like, look, just go in there and do it. You just got to go in there and work. Like if you get your butt whooped, you get your butt whooped. If you don't, oh, well, you, it's a learning process. So I like, look, man, so you – he said he wanted to get ready for the Golden Gloves and stuff like that. And he said, I want to do a, um, become an amateur again. Yeah. He, he was a he was one of my amateur teammates. He said, Tony, I want to get back into fighting just to – he uh, worked with the uh, business Herbalife. He was like, just to, you know, get with the fighters and sell Herbalife. And I was like, all right, cool, man. I said, look, if you want to – if you really want to take it serious, let's go um, – come train with me, then we go spar. Yeah. And so I said, look, man, we got sparring this <laughs> – I said, look, man, we got sparring this day. I said, be here. I was like, are we sparring somebody? He's an up-and-coming – um. Pro and so look, just come. You know he didn't have that many fights. He didn't have many fights, but he had seven good fights. <laughs> and so he was on a, uh, and you know he was on a U.S. team, but I didn't tell Blake that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he went in and got his ass whooped. It was so funny. And I was just in the corner laughing. I'm like, look, you want to work? <laughs> yeah. This is what you got to go through. He's like, man, you didn't tell me he was seven and zero signed with Alan Heyman <laughs> coming from the U.S. team. I'm like, look, homie, if you want to be good, you gotta, you gotta so put like, the work in and fight the best, bro. <laughs> I just remember him telling the story, saying, like, I never said I wanted to be a champion. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I never said I wanted to be a champion. I like, look. <laughs> so you probably had to learn, like, I okay, have, look. Know, I had to learn. All these people don't want to be boxing exactly. champions. Just, I, like, they're I, not all they have the same mentality exactly. I did. I need to, like, take learn to coach the individual. You're right. So I, that's what I say about the individual because I took it too serious at one when I yeah. first started. I was trying to make everybody become champions right away. I'm like, <laughs> and I realize that's not what they probably want to do. They probably just want to box just to get a couple yeah. of – Fights on a record, or they just want to be an amateur, just to you know, just to work on their confidence or something like that. Just learn the art of boxing, but everybody don't want to be a, a world champion, and yeah. so I learned that. So I, so with all the fighters and stuff I have now, I gotta dissect their their thoughts. I gotta see what where they coming from. What's their overall goal? Like mm -hmm. if your goal is to just to stay an amateur, win the Golden Gloves here and there, or if you want to become a real champion, I can approach you different. Yeah, sure. I can approach you different. Like, all right, so if you really want to become a champion, this is what we have to do. If you just want to box, just stay in shape and just learn how to fight and just uh, say, you know, just, just want to box, then I can approach you a little different. So I have to, you have to take a, take a lot of. But that's, I mean, that's yeah. a lesson for any coach or trainer, right? Exactly. Like, you know, I, I've seen that mistake too, you know, with maybe bodybuilder turned personal mm -hmm. trainer. And you're making, you know, the middle-aged guy that just wanted to lose 10 pounds do drop sets on legs until he pukes. And exactly. Like, that's not it's, what he wants that's to that's do. What, that's not what he wants. <laughs> and so I learned that. And so by me um, learning that, it helped out a lot with my clients and stuff like that. I just got to just take the person as, you know, whatever their goal is, I just got to just look at it and just, just treat them as an individual, you know, and just um, don't treat everybody like they want to become a world champion because I threw, you know, I got, I kind of, rubbed a couple of people wrong by yeah. doing that. I'm like, ah, let me take a chill pill and I and you know, and I took that as a as a learning lesson and then and now look at the success that we're having, you know, from from me learning from my mistakes. Sure. You know? Yeah, that's so that's what you gotta keep doing. Yeah. And just keep learning. Now, um, you know, I with you every day now, mm -hmm. um, in the in the in the business and watching you coach and um it's obvious like you have a strong work ethic. That's yeah. The way you approach, you know, your business. I'm watching you train for a marathon right now. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not afraid of long hours. You're not afraid to be the first man in and the last man out. Exactly. You're not afraid of all the, you know, being a business owner, people don't realize you do a lot of the the crummy jobs too. Yeah. I mean, taking out trash and yeah. uh, picking up stuff when there's no one left to pick it up and all the, all <laughs> exactly. the little things. And you're not afraid of those. But I'm not. So did you develop that? work ethic as a fighter or have you been a kind of a hard worker your whole life um well, it's in different chapters of my life i developed that um as a kid i've always had a chip on my shoulder i always felt left out because my mother she never did uh she wasn't around as much she never did raise me so i always felt like left out because my aunts raised my father older sisters raised me and i see and i see the way they took care of their kids and i see the way they treated their you know, they're their kids, and it was just a um, a certain way they loved them, and a certain mm -hmm. way they they handled the kids. And I never had that, and so I always felt like, uh, man, I I wanted I wanted their love. And then you know, and um, and growing up, I had like I was struggling with with I had a learning disability because of things my mom done to me as a kid. It wasn't bad, but you know, she just you know she took me out of school and stuff like that, trying to get back at my father with certain things. And so I struggled. So in my so I always felt like left out I always felt 
I always felt like I just just needed more. And um and so get a little emotional. I'll yeah, that's all right, it. man. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I I developed that from um just 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 feeling just just feeling just but kind like, of a fear mentality. Yeah, fear mentality, yeah. Like if I don't work hard, yeah. Then I'm scared I'm gonna go back or Exactly. Yeah. And so with that and then and my and I then I had a life changing moment when the you know, going I was failing through school all through grade school, all through somewhat high school. You know, when I was in high school I grew up in Pleasant Grove and so I hung around a bad crowd like my junior year. I mean, yeah, my not junior year, but my freshman year in high school, living in Pleasant Grove, hanging around a bad crowd. And uh, we're just doing things that just bad kids were doing, skipping school and um and I wasn't going to class and so I failed my freshman year. And so and then a couple of things just went wrong while I was there. And I called my aunt. I was like, Aunt, my aunt's saying, I was like, mm-hmm. um, I gotta get out of here. I said, Can you and she just she my aunt was living in Chicago at the time, then she moved to Plano. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I knew she was moving to Plano. I was like, Aunt, can I just come stay with you? Cause my father raised me by himself, single man. He did the best he could do to raise sure. me. But he was just a single man living a single lifestyle, but he he took care of me. He treated me like a man. He never had to wake me up for school or nothing like that. But I had that little work ethic with that. But then I was like, look, if I want something more in life, I got to gotta get out of this environment. And so I called my aunt, and she opened her house to me with open arms. And she uh, let me move with her and ended up going to Plano West. And so when I was in, uh, when I ended up going to Plano West, when I went, to, it was a two-year um, school called Shepton, where it's a uh, freshman and sophomore. Mm-hmm. And so um, they end up having me with the mental part. They ended up getting me back. And the right grade I was supposed to be, they end up catching getting, you up, catching me up, and where I was supposed to be, and end up um, getting back into my right grade. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so that last year in high school, you know, uh, this is where this this is where my whole life changing moment came. When my, that last year, my junior year in high school, there was an announcement uh, at my uh, when I was in class. They say, "Hey, if you want to run for class president, meet me in a, come come to the auditorium." And so I was talking to one of my African American friends. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Yo, man, um, I was a little man. I was, you know, I, I should run for class president, man." I was like, "What?" I was like, "What you think?" He was like, "No disrespect to nobody." He was yeah, like, "Look, yeah, man, it was an all white school." Yeah. And so he was like, "Man, yo, these white people ain't finna vote for your <laughs> black ass." <laughs> he said it like that. Yeah. And so I was like, uh, "I was like, you know what? I got mad at him because because yeah. ever since I've been there, everybody open uh, came to me with open arms. They yeah. never judged me. It was it was never a race thing. When I moved to Plano, it was just all love. I got mad. I was like, you know what? Watch me do it. And I went to the auditorium and they told me what I had to do. And I took it to my aunt. My aunt, she helped me. We put together a speech. We uh, put got made posters and everything. And, um, and I was going against the most qualified people. I, I was going against the Valley Victorian. I was going against the leader of the Congress class. I was going against all the top people. And I won by landslides. Wow. I was never, you know, and I, and I won. And I was like, I won. <laughs> I was like, what am I supposed to what do? What do I do now? What do I do now? And so um, <laughs> that senior year, man, I actually I learned what a team is because they had a Congress class. Yeah. And they and they helped me out there the whole year. And then I ended up um, just gave me the comfort to do everything I could do in life. I was like, man, if I, if I could succeed at that, I could do anything. And I was like, man, I did it. I And I uh, was successful at it. I ended up being the um, master of ceremonies at my graduation. Wow. And it was over like thousands and thousands of people there. And me and my aunt and my um Senior teachers, they all helped me write the, the the class speech. Yeah, and I did. I was like, man, and coming from the background I came from to that, from coming from Pleasant Grove, the hood, to like a predominantly white school, like, and it was I lived two. Different, Were you the first black class president? I was the first black and the uh, first uh, black homecoming king. I wow, was homecoming king. You got Mr. them both, West. man. Sweet, I got them both. <laughs> and like they wouldn't let me run for um, prom king, and they said that I was winning. Yeah, everything. <laughs> and you know, and it was an all white school, and then. Um, yeah. And just to and, and just to, to accomplish that after all my after all the struggling with school after saying I had a learning disability saying that um, I was high school dropout material and uh, and they and they told me that so that's where I really got my the the will to do anything because I succeeded at that I was like yo I could do anything yeah I could do anything if I could do that come from the circumstances I was in yeah and so uh, that that's where I got my. That's one of the reasons I got my my work ethic, and then um, and when it came to boxing, I used to uh, see my cousin. Um, he played in the NFL. He played. He was his name was Antoine Randall. He played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Went to IU University, and uh, I used to watch him play in high school. I used to watch him uh, go to college. I used to go to IU with him and hang out with him. Him and his um, little brother. I used to just go to college. He was there, and uh, 
We used to watch him train, watch him do everything. He was a star. He ended up getting drafted second round by Pittsburgh. I was like, yo, I want to do that. I said it was something I want to do, but I sucked at football. <laughs> I was terrible, you know. And, uh, and but so, your your story of how boxing found you, I exactly. think to put it in your words, is yeah, pretty in, funny because, yeah. like, I mean, weren't you like picking up trash for a living at that time? Like at the yeah at the time. Um, so I uh, I worked for Collin County Apartment Complex, uh-huh. and so I was uh, I was a student there, and so in order to um, yeah, to, to to have the to, to be a student and live at the apartments, you know, you have to work for it. In order, I'm sorry, in order to uh, to work for the you know work for apartments, you know, you have to take classes and go to school there and stuff like that. And so my job was a porter, so I had to pick up trash every day, keep the apartments furnished every day. And um, yeah, man, every morning I got up at six a.m. and just pick the trash up and for for six years straight, man, for six years straight. And uh, I graduated. In two years, <laughs> two yeah. years with uh, Collin County, but um, well, I was doing it while I was boxing, and so when I uh, while I was boxing, I graduated and uh, I couldn't, I wasn't a student. But they was like, look, if you want to, they knew I made the U.S. team. I had nowhere really to. I had my family, but I didn't want to stay sure. with my family. They was like, look, man, Tony, we know what you're doing. You, we know what you're about. So look, if you just take one class at the uh, college and um, and just you know just continue to work here, you know you can do have a place. So I had free rent for my whole. Six years, I had free rent, um, didn't have to really worry about much. And I just picked up, I was like, look, I pick up trash all day. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, but that, I, I mean, I think that in it, that story in itself just speaks to your humility. I can imagine a lot of people, you know, they're uh, almost Olympic level athletes mm-hmm. that wouldn't go pick up trash after exactly. the fight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy, like, right? Like, I, I do you fight one night and go, go pick, pick up the trash next the next morning? <laughs> like, I literally uh, went to the Olympic training center and stayed there for like two weeks. And uh, seeing all these, you know, being around top athletes. I'm I'm in Colorado training and busting my butt off there and just being around the the top wrestler team, the top yeah. swimmers, the top boxers. We all at the Olympic Training Center and, you know, living a life, busting our butt off, competing and stuff like that. Then I go back home, fly in. Next morning, I'm back up picking up trash like nothing happened. <laughs> picking, hey, look, you. in order to do what you need to do in life, you know, to be successful, you got to do what you have to do. You got to gotta sacrifice. And I learned the uh, – for some reason, I learned the, the 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 art of hard work, the art of sacrifice at a young age, and uh, I just knew what lifestyle I wanted. I knew that you, it's not gonna come easy. You gotta <laughs> you gotta bust your butt off in order to get it. So I I caught it at a young age. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Man, that's that's uh, that's awesome. Um, so a little bit, uh, let's ask you for some advice. Um, okay. You know, for the trainer or the the pro athlete, or not even necessarily pro athlete, but the athlete out there that wants to transition. Mm-hmm. from athlete to coach. What advice do you have for that person? You've done it successfully. You've mm-hmm. been the athlete. Now you have, you know, a, a successful coaching business. Yeah. Um, how, what advice do you have for for that person? You have to be empathetic with the fighter. You got to understand his strong points and bring it out. You got to understand his weaknesses and get it, you know, just, you know, understand his weaknesses, understand, understand a person. And so, so you just can't treat every fighter the same because everybody's their own person, everybody their individual. If you train all the fighters the same way, you're not going to be successful because everybody have their own type of style. Mm-hmm. Everybody got their own way they they learned. Everybody learn different. Everybody take in information different. So you got to treat, you got to learn that person. And so that's that's one thing you got to you got to be willing to run through a brick wall to be successful in coaching. You got to I mean what I mean by that you got to be humble. You got to. You have to be willing to learn. You can't stop learning. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a student of the game as coaching, because it's. I think coaching is harder than than fighting sometimes because you gotta come up with the whole game plan. You gotta make sure your fighter is is mentally and physically in great shape. I think it's a very similar uh, being a business owner too, exactly. right? Like, you know, if you want to have success in business, you can't do everything yourself. Yes. And sometimes you want to do everything yourself because it's like, I don't know how to communicate this, so I just have to do it myself. Exactly. And Which is, you know, something I've struggled with yeah. through the years. But then, you know, whether you're a coach or a, a leader in a business, mm-hmm. you have to be able to empower the people around you. Have you have to. And trust them. Yeah. And and not uh, not do it for them or else they can't do anything. Exactly. And so you're learning that both yeah. as a business owner and a coach. Yeah. 
So that's 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 you're right. Cause uh, when I first got there, uh, you know, Nathan he was my my business partner, and then with the old gym I was in. But then when I decided to open my own gym, he took a step back. He's like, look, you could do this, and so I did it on my own. And so at first I was doing everything, and I had help with Heather here and there, teaching class here and there. But I was doing everything. I was teaching all the classes. I was doing everything, and then. Um, then all the help just all the people, all the help just slowly started coming. It was just a blessing. And then uh and then two, three years later, you came and I learned so much from you, how you just you came in, you saw something, and you just you had a vision and you came in and you made it happen right away. I was like, yo, if he could do it, I said, that's I'm I'm so inspired by that, by the way you just came in and and you had a vision, you treated people so so right. You treated people like you didn't come in like a a cocky business. You came in and and let everybody do their job. Let them be themselves. And so that's that's I learned that from you. And then you know, and also you know, you had to talk with me. It was like Tony, you can't do it all. You got to relax, Tony. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, in order to duplicate everything you're doing, you have to let other people be themselves. You got to let them coach. You know, so um, and so while you've been here, you took a lot of stress off me because at first I was I was scared to let everybody just handle do it themselves. I was I just wanted to put my hands on everything, but take a step back and just let people be themselves, and then. Life is good now. I could travel with my fighters. I could. Um, I don't have to be at the gym all day, all, mm-hmm. like I, like I was. So you know, just just it's just a learning process. Everything is. I just love learning. I yeah. just love just just man. And being we're uh, we're fortunate because we have a great team of people around mm-hmm. us. We are. We blessed. Yeah. We can't we can't complain. We have a great great team. Yeah, I'm thrilled about uh, yeah. just a quality group of individuals in that building. Yeah. And it's great. I really like it. Yes, yeah, so everybody had their own individual style, but somehow it's all connected we all yeah. make it happen we make Every, it work different happen. strong suits yeah um you know we all have different things we're good at or not good at exactly um, but it it all works together really yeah. well it's fun yeah so, so i'm having fun and I'm having fun doing it with you yeah you're one I'm, me too man um okay so let's talk about the future a little bit like you're obviously an ambitious guy and now like during this interview i'm kind of seeing some themes that i haven't seen before too like you know you uh jump into fighting with not having being rare, raised as a fighter, yeah, your uh, buddy basically jokes about the class president. And you're like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Now marathon. Yeah. You're like, you know what, I'll I'll run a marathon. Yep. So like an ambitious guy, your stock is on the rise as mm-hmm. a coach. Yeah. Um, your business is on the rise. You know what's what do, can we expect to see from Tony Mack oh, in man, the coming it's, years? It's so much I want. I want to do. <laughs> it's beautiful. Love. My overall goal is to have multiple world champions get a kid to the Olympics. Um, I want to get into the uh, online training business. Um, I, You know, in college, I did a little acting, theater and stuff like that. Yeah. I uh, did some plays. There's an individual, uh, not some independent films, say individual, independent films. Did some of that. So I wouldn't mind getting back into acting. Cool. And uh, and now I just, and I found the new sport, fell in love with uh, with running. So I yeah. want to continue to run. And, you know, who knows, one day qualify for the Boston marathon or something like that and it's it's so much the sky's the limit I, I honestly believe if i really want something bad enough i could i could make it happen i, yeah. I could get the job done so um it's just just a matter of how bad do i want it and yeah. uh, how bad how much how bad am i willing to work for it and so um the sky's the limit man i'm just excited about the opportunities that we're blessed with man because we got so many opportunities man. yeah we have no we have no excuses not to be successful in what we want to do because we got all the resources to to make it happen and so uh i just realized there's no excuses and i'm gonna just go for whatever we want to do if i fail i fail if i succeed i succeed it's all on us right yeah we control it we control our own destiny so hey that's the limit man I, there's there's no limit i meant the sky is the limit so uh i'm just excited about life man i just don't i just excited to see what's, what's coming that's awesome man well yeah. i think you definitely like you put that off and you know when when people tell me that they like the boxing classes and you know they usually compliment your energy and i think you're just uplifting person so uh, i'm excited that i have a front row seat to see what's in your future man yes, sir and um i appreciate you coming today hey man i really appreciate you man. telling your story <laughs> yeah yeah so um if people want to get a hold of you um if people wanted to you know a boxing class or join the amateur team mm-hmm. or um what's the best way to get in touch with tony mack and get involved with what you're doing uh follow us on instagram at tmac elite training or you could follow us on um, Facebook at T Mac Elite Training, or you could go to hiddengym.net, go through, go to the uh, website, 
and uh, get all our class schedule and everything. And uh, we have tmacelite.com. So, yeah. That's, that's it right there. And that's if you want to box for fitness. If you want to box for fitness. Tell, or, tell us about the amateur team real quick because that's a cool thing that's growing fast. Yeah, we um, – for the past three years I had an amateur team. We, You know, we won Dallas Golden Gloves about three years in a row. But, you know, um, the amateurs is, 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 is a hard business because you don't get paid. You got to sacrifice, stuff like that. So, you know, we're, it's, it's in and out. But, you know, I got a guy, um, Blake, he came through, a coach, and – one of the amateur coaches came through and just rebuilt the whole amateur program. And so uh, we got about 30 kids fighting, 30 kids that's training, and we got about 15 kids going to the Dallas Golden Gloves. And uh, I can't wait. It'll be my first time to yeah, go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty it. cool. So I'm, I'm excited. So we got a whole new group of fighters. These guys never fought before. It's going to be exciting to see how they handle the lights and, <laughs> and how they handle the crowd and everything. So it's a, a bunch of brand-new kids that uh, – What's it like – this is like a newbie boxing question. Yeah. But, but I'm thinking about these kids in their first fight. What's the first time when you get just really just rocked <laughs> and oh, like, man. and you have to like, oh man, am I going to keep doing this or should I that's fall down? You, or? That's when you discover who you really are as a person Yeah, <laughs> and you get hit in the mouth so hard. You're like, look, should I be doing this? Or should I? like, yeah. it's, it's, it's scary. Like it's a couple of times I have to second guess my career because I got cracked so many times, but the fighters, they just have to learn how to just, you can hit with a good shot. You got to stay relaxed and just don't. Go all crazy because sometimes you get hit. You just want to be like, ah, I want to get hit pisses back. Pisses you and off, pisses I you imagine. off, yeah. and so you just want to get them back. But the, the key is just staying relaxed and staying, staying calm, and just get back on your jab and just because you're going to be naturally nervous. The crowd's going to get to you. The the announcer, the referee, normally is not a referee in the ring, so you're going to be nervous. And so uh, just 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 stand relaxed. Just, you know, you get hit, just don't try to get them back so quick. Try to try to kill them. You just gotta. Stay relaxed and just stay cool. Stay calm and then just let it allow all your training to do the work. Everything you train for, it'll naturally come. Yes. That's awesome, man. All right, guys. Well, yeah, you heard it from him. T Mac Elite Training. That's Instagram, Facebook, uh, hiddengym.net. You're on there yep. too. So you're a pretty easy guy to get hold of. Hey, you you could, or just come by the gym. We're there. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me yep, yelling at somebody. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks again. Yes, sir. And uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in.